Hello and Namaste, this is Daffy TV. Today's news highlights Aju's thirst is for gaining political power and money. With the farewell of Prime Minister Oli, Sitaram Baral Rot, let Arzu learn from Radhika, let Dewa not learn from Oli. His analysis is earlier when Dewa was the Prime Minister, Arzu's name was connected with political appointments, large contracts, transfers and promotions of high-ranking officials. The current economic status of Dewa family is rooted in the corruption of Azu when the war repeatedly came to power. Baral's analysis reveals a way to raise the family's financial status when her husband, Servardo Dewa, was Prime Minister. The financial status of the current Prime Minister Dewa is an example of the abuse of power by his wife, Arzu. When Dewa became the Home Minister for the first time in 2048 BS, Dewa lived in a dormitory in Kathmandu. While he was Home Minister, then U.S. Ambassador to Nepal, Julia Chang, arranged for Arzu's marriage with him. Deva, who was starting in the UK during the 2046 movement, returned to Nepal before the 2048 general election. After winning the election from Dadal Tuda in 2048 BS, Deva was starting in UK during the 2046 movement, returned to Nepal before the 2048 general election. After winning the election from Dadal Tuda in 2048 BS, Deva's journey to power began. In the property details submitted by Deva in 2052, it is mentioned that he has 80 tola of gold, 2000 tola of silver and silver utensils, and jewels in his name. At that time, Arju had 5 Ropanis, 3 Anas in Kathmandu and Bhaktapur, and 7 Bigas, 6 Kathas, and 3 Dhurs of land in Bardia. Deva, who did not have a house in Kathmandu till 2052, now owns a luxurious bungalow in Bodanilkanta. Apart from this, Deva's financial status is no less than that of an aristocrat. The Royal Commission for the Control of Corruption, formed by King Ganendra on Fagun 6, 2061, had started an investigation against Deva on allegation of corruption. He was arrested from his house and taken under police control. Without settling this issue, the Supreme Court decided to dismiss the commission on Fagun 1, 2062, saying that it was not in accordance with the Constitution. After the dismissal, the commission, the investigation on Deva also halted. Earnings from NGO Arju, the granddaughter of Jutta Samsar, who left her post of street in Maharaj and raised Palpa from Kathmandu, has done her PhD in psychology from Punjab University, India. After completing her studies in India, she was involved in setting up a Sathi organization to raise her voice on the issue of violence against women. Arju is one of the eight founders of Sathi, which was established in 1992-80. It was founded by women of educated and high caste background at that time. Among those who helped the Sathi financially were Americans as well. According to sources, Arju met with the ambassador Julia Chang through the same American donors. Chang arranged the marriage to manage Deva's chaotic life. Deva became prime minister for the first time after his marriage in 1995-80. In the same year, Arju established the Rural Women's Development and Unity Center. Rana is still a board member of the center, which was set up with the slogan of establishing a just society. The following year, in 1996, the Federation of Safe Maternity Networks was established under the auspicious of Arjun. The current president of the Federation is Arjun. She has been involved in UN agencies such as ICUN, UNESCO and IPAS, and international NGOs. After Deva became the Prime Minister in 1995, the time she was giving to social organizations started shifting to the Prime Minister's office. At the same time, she started earning money. As a result, she became more active in the political arena than in the social sphere. After the split of Nepali Congress in 2015, NBS became the Nepali Congress Democratic. After they were lead the Democratic, it became easy for Arju to come to the center of politics. She also managed the fund for running the party, where Arju's relationship spread with businessmen. She joined the Nepali Congress only in 2053, BS. As Deva became the Prime Minister, her activism also increased, leaving the earnings of NGOs and consultants she seems to have plunged in the political earnings. Always in dispute. As soon as Deva became the Prime Minister, Arju starts coming to controversy. Earlier in 2073 PS, when Deva was the Prime Minister, the ambassador proposal to the controversial Minbar businesswoman Asalama came under controversy. Jawadur Chand was appointed as the Chief of the Police against the order of the Supreme Court. Arju's name has been linked to the appointments, promotions and transfers. Along with that come the issue of her transactions. She has also been accused of being close to independent debates in Nepal because of her proximity to the United States. The allegation was made at the inaugural function of the conference on India at 70, Democracy, Development and Dissent organized by the Thinker Tank India, Foundation under the India Ideas Conclave, 
organized by the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, affiliated Rashtriya Swamsevak Sangh. On 19th to 21st, Karthik 2073 PS further confirms. At the event which was held in Goa, India, they were shared this days with Lobsang Sang, an exiled Tibetan government official. Dewa, who came into controversy by giving the ambassador of Japan to Rashtra Prajatantra Party, had come into another controversy by appointing his mother-in-law, Pratibha Rana, as ambassador. There was talk of Arjun's involvement behind it. Recently, there was talk of removing Oli in Nepal and appointing Dewa as prime minister, while Arju was undergoing knee treatment in Japan. Arju, who had gone to Japan with her son for treatment, was staying at the embassy with her mother. As Dewa was being appointed prime minister, she hurried to Nepal. Another topic of contention is the Orleans School. The school located in Khumaltar of Lalitpur is one of the most expensive schools in Kathmandu Valley. She has been in controversy from time to time due to the high fees charged by the school in which Arju has invested. Now Arju's name has been removed from the school's website. More than that, the controversy seems to be more focused on political transactions. The asset laundering department had found assets worth rupees 2 billion in Arju's name. An investigation conducted by the department in 2077 BS has found shares in the name of Arju in hydropower banks and financial institutions in the name of Rana. Rana had bought a house in Kalali for election campaigns purposes in last election. The department also stated that there was no coordination between the source of income and purchase. Although the source of property was not disclosed, the department could not take any action against Arju. Recently, Dr. Arjo's name was also linked to the appointment of Deputy Chairman of the National Planning Commission, Vishwanath Podil, and Umesh Rust is Minister of State for Health. Podil is involved in the Orleans School, which is funded by Arjo, and Srust is Arjo's business partner. Arjo has been investing in hydropower and other sectors through Srust. They had tried to make Dr. Sankar Sarma the Vice President. They had to apologize at the collision meeting over Srust's appointment. The connection with Batas. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation Prem Ali went at the Narendra Museum with his man on January 6. Minister Ali expressed dissatisfaction saying that the structure including the coffee shop being built by the Batas group in the museum was against the agreement. Then the discussion on Batas started in Kathmandu. Along with Batas, Arjo's name and photo posted is a consultant on the website of Batas organization attracted the attention of many. The media wrote news on this matter. As soon as the news came, RJ issued a statement saying that she was not an advisor to Batas. At the same time, there was a discussion about why Batas kept Arjo's name. They were had a long association with Anandaraj Batas of Pokhara, who was the chairman of Batas Group. Manpal Medical College in Pokhara was bought by Batas and Narayan Powdell. Manipal's deal was done by Arjo. Batas and Arjo had a dispute after seeking for more shares without any investment. That dispute made the Batas blow away from Deva forever. It was Arju who helped Batas to get a dealership of heavy equipment called Caterpillar for Nepal. Batas has been associated with Deva since 2057 BS. Due to the same relationship, when Madhav Kumar was the Prime Minister of Nepal, Dr. Prakash Saran Mahat, who was then the Energy Minister, appointed Batas to the Board of Directors of Nepal Electricity Authority. Arju had also arranged for it as well. People were surprised to know Ali's action is understood the relationship between Batas and Deva. However, few people knew about the rift between them. Batas, who got success due to Deva, became close to UML leaders because of Ravindra Adhikari. This new relationship of Batas, who has been maintaining the financial transactions, was also kind to Anoy Arjo. After Adhikari's death in a helicopter crash, Batas approached close to Yogesh Patrai, another UML leader and an integral friend of the Adhikari. Arjo also didn't like this new relationship of Batas, who visited to Deva's residence with simple things too. Minister Ali's attempt to cut the wings of the Batas became sensational subject to Arju. Arju's old thinking is that those around her should not know more than her. Not only the Batas but also the medical professional Sunil Sarma was affected by this thinking. Lately, Chief Justice Cholindra Samsar Rana has been on the same case. From Ratsabandhan to Balgut, during Oli's tenure, Nepal's relations with India were not good. Bharatiya Janata Party Foreign Affairs Chief Vijay Chauthaiwali arrived in Kathmandu as Modi's envoy to improve their relations. It was Shravan 6, 2078 from the airport. Chauthaiwali went straight to Prime Minister's residence. Hindus were busy celebrating Jane Purnima that day. Arju did not hesitate to seize the opportunity. She welcomed Chauthaiwali with Rakhi. To tie Rakhi means to have a brother-sister relationships. Arju seems to have moved forward with the idea of developing a new relationship with India through Chauthaiwale. 
Her thoughts became public only after Prime Minister Deva was invited to visit India. The vibrant Gujarat Global Conference, scheduled to be held in Gujarat, India on post-26, 2077, was postponed due to the growing COVID infection. Prime Minister Deva was scheduled to Gujarat on 25 posts to attend the conference. Two weeks before the visit, Arju had been lobbying to make the visit royal. Arriving in Delhi on a private visit on post 11, she met Chautaiwale, the foreign affairs chief of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Though she has gone to Delhi for her brother's Bhusan's treatment, the question arised in her political meetings. At the center of the question was Arju's status. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs usually prepares for the Prime Minister's visit abroad. But the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was not even aware of Arju's Delhi rest this time. On the advice of Arju, a Congress team led by Prakash Saran Mahat left for India on 21 Asus. The Nepali delegation had visited India with a plan to expand the party affiliation of the Congress with the Indian ru ruling party, BJP. The latest example of the extent to which Arju has crossed the line of position to get a decision in her favour is the meeting between UML Chairman K.P. Oli and Prime Minister Deva in Balkot. After the leaders of Kulaisan refused to move the MCC forward, Prime Minister Deva took his wife Arju to Balkot on the evening of 6th of Fagun. In Balkot, Arju participated in the talks with Oli as a Prime Minister. Pressuring Oli, she said, you were trying to get the MCC approved by Parliament. Now the time has come. Let's move forward by approving it. Oli threatened her and said, we would settle the matter. During the meeting between Prime Minister Deva and Oli, Arju actively participated in the meeting. Arju's conclusion was that Deva could not finalize the matter with Oli. So she got into the car and headed towards Balkot, saying that she would persuade Oli about MCC anyway. It was also a good time for her to repay the debt owed to her by the Americans three decades ago to settle down her with Deva. However, Arju's attempt did not go ahead as Oli did not surrender. However, behind the scenes, she seems to be more active desire to move the MCC forward than Deva. Arju's activism in the economic, political and diplomatic fields is growing. In the last election, Deva had nominated Arju as his successor. This idea of Deva could not be approved by the voters of Kalali 5. Arju, who is active in party politics, is a central member of the Nepali Congress. She seems to be trying to come to power after Deva in Budanil Kanta. If the forthcoming election supports her, her thought would gradually come to fruition. Now her thirst seems to be more focused on gaining political power and also money. For that, appointing people to her side is just a process. With this, we are at the end of the report. If you are liking our content, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.